So this meteorite was found at Maryborough in um, Western Victoria uh, by a guy called David Hole, who was out fossicking for gold. Uh, he didn't find gold, but he found this treasure, the meteorite, and he, he noticed how heavy it was. It, it reacted to his metal detector and he brought it home. And then he wanted to try and see what it looked like on the inside. And he tried a number of things like using an angle grinder and didn't get very far because these are very tough and he tried drilling a few little holes in it as well, but it didn't have much success. So he, he thought it might be a meteorite and he kept it in his shed for a little while and then he contacted the museum through our curious department and um, <clears throat> they, he sent through some images to me and I thought it looked very promising. I thought it looked, had some features that looked like a meteorite and it's also very heavy. So then he brought it into the museum and we, we started to examine it in some detail. How they knew it was there was they actually found it in a spot where it was unlikely to be. Um, so that's what triggered the interest. Uh, how long it had been there is a very good question um, and that's one that everybody tends to want to know. Um, the, uh, believe it or not, this has been um, uh, dated in terms of how long it's been on the earth, fairly rough, but um, the figures are somewhere in the last thousand years, but it could be quite young in the last few hundred years. So it, it's possible that the meteorite was seen by uh, in, uh, Aboriginal people, seen, it, seen to fall. It's also possible that the early gold prospectors around Maryborough noticed it, but didn't bother to bring it to scientific attention. Um, so these are intriguing questions that we don't quite know the answer to. There, ha there have been historic um, descriptions of meteors being seen in the Maryborough region back in terms of to the 1880s. So again, it's possible this is one of them, but we haven't been able to pin it to any of those particular sightings. And by, by examining it too, it's not, it's not highly weathered. So, you know, our suspicion is it hasn't been on the earth that long. No. Yeah. So this meteorite is made of um, silicate minerals mainly, and those silicate minerals are very high in magnesium and iron. Also within it, we see little blebs of metal, and that metal's made up of iron and nickel. If we look at it under the microscope, we also see these little circular structures in there. And these are the earliest things that probably crystallised in our solar system from a, a hot gaseous cloud forming little droplets of liquid. And the liquid has cooled and these crystals have grown in it. And they're these high temperature magnesium and iron silicates. Yes, and those, uh, those are called <coughs> chondrules and, and they give their name to a whole group of meteorites called the chondrites. And this, this one happens to be uh, the most common type of chondrite. It's uh, an H5 ordinary chondrite, and they make up about 40% of the known meteorites. So if you think you've found a meteorite, the best thing to do is contact the museum. And uh, you can contact our public inquiry service called Curious, and they, they will forward it on to an appropriate geoscientists here at the museum and sometimes if you send in a picture that's enough we can tell straight away whether it might be a meteorite um, or if it's definitely not a meteorite uh, but often it helps if you bring it into the museum and we can examine it and then tell you what sort of rock it is if it's not a meteorite.